I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm finishing up my video series on the best image settings for the GoPro Session and other action cameras too, but mostly the GoPro Session we've been focusing on. Today, we're going to look at frame rate. Which looks best, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second? How does that inter interact with the resolution of the cameras? That's the question we're going to answer. Stay tuned. If you've been watching this series, then you know that I have concluded until now that 2.7K is basically the answer for what's the best settings out of the GoPro Session 5. 2.7K seems to give even better looking footage than 4K coming out of the GoPro, as long as we're talking about fast motion like FPV. 2.7K seems to give the best image quality when uploaded to YouTube, and that seems to be true even when the viewer is viewing in 1080p. Uh, and the reason for that is that the 1080p footage from the GoPro actually looks worse than the 2.7K footage. So of course, when you upload it to YouTube, it also looks worse. So 2.7K is what you're looking at, but what about the frame rate? See, I've been doing all my testing until now at 30 frames per second. And the reason I've been doing that is because the higher resolutions on the GoPro don't support higher frame rates. So at 1080p, you can go up to 60 frames per second, but at 2.7K or 4K resolution, I think you're capped at 48 frames per second for 2.7K and maybe 30 frames per second for 4K. I'm not 100% sure about that. So in order to keep everything consistent, I've been shooting at 30 frames per second. And of course, 30 frames per second is okay, but especially for action footage like FPV, 60 frames per second looks, well, it certainly looks smoother. And if you could have exactly the same picture quality with more frames per second, well, I think, I think we'd agree that that would be a good thing. But the question is, what do you give up in terms of picture quality when you go to the higher frames per second? Well, why would you give up anything at all in terms of picture quality? And the answer to that is that the GoPro uses the same bit rate for the higher frames per second as it does for the lower. So for example, if we look at 2.7K 30, I believe the bit rate is 60 megabits per second, and, or maybe it's 50 megabits per second. I should really have done some research before I started this, whatever it is. When you go from 2.7K 30 to 2.7K 60, then the bit rate doesn't change. And what that means is that each pixel is essentially getting half the number of bits per second. Well, or does it? Because if you have half the number of bits per second, but twice the number of frames, then you're getting half the bits per pixel, but two times as many pixels. So does it all kind of cancel out? Can you sort of get something for nothing here? Well, that's what we're going to find out. I should also point out that some action cameras like the, um, pour one out for the Runcam 3, but the Runcam 3 or the Runcam 2, they do in fact use more bits per second when you go to the higher bit rates. So the conclusions here are, are more likely to be true just for the Session 5 and not for another camera. If you see that your camera uses, say, 25 megabits per second for 1080p 30, but it uses 45 megabits per second per 1080p 60, well, that's a different scenario than we're going into here, and you may need to do your own research. You may, in fact, get the same image quality with more frames per second. Why is more frames per second better? Well, I'm going to show you some footage, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and of course you can draw your own conclusions. If you've never noticed it before though, have you ever noticed sometimes when you start watching an FPV video, it starts out and it's not quite as smooth and then a few seconds in, suddenly it gets much smoother and that's the the, the higher frame rate feed kind of kicks in, it up res reses once the video gets going. Uh, that's the higher frame rate and especially for the type of content that we're creating FPV videos, higher frame rate, I think it just universally looks better. There are many applications, like for example, if you're doing a film, many people are used to seeing film at 24 frames per second, and they find the smoother looking footage of higher frame rates actually, it's they're just not what they expected. Some people say it looks like CGI. Uh, I remember when televisions first came out with these 60 hertz or 120 hertz up sampling modes, and you would turn it on and it would, it would kind of look weird and CGI and so smooth and I just didn't like it. And it's not that it was objectively worse, it's just not what you were used to seeing. I really think that YouTube has played, and GoPro and action cameras in general, have played a big role in 
broadening the acceptance of higher frame rates in the market because we see these action camera footages and YouTube is, I think, one of the first platforms to widely support 60 frame per second playback. And since this footage is a new kind of, it's not like a soap opera or a movie or a television show that we've been watching for years and years and years and we're used to how it looks. It's skateboarding or surfing or something new. And when we see it in the higher frame rate, we're not sort of predisposed to expect it to look a certain way. Well, okay, enough editorializing about the history of frame rates. Let me show you some footage I've recorded and I'm gonna show you, you can decide for yourself which you think looks better or worse. Now I wanna tell you this video is being exported from Premiere at 2.7K and 60 frames per second. So you need to be watching it at either 1080p 60 if you can or 2.7K 60. Uh, it'll look like 1440p down in the menu in the lower right. There you go. Uh, just click that gear icon and make sure you're watching it at one of those resolutions. Of course, if you're watching it at a lower resolution, then the conclusions aren't really going to be very valid. Uh, although this is a 60 frame per second video, when my source video goes down to 30 frames per second, you should still see the difference. Even though you're playing it back at 60 frames per second, I'll be inserting it at 30 frames per second, so you'll still be able to tell the difference. When we go to 48 frames per second, there may be some effect because 48 doesn't divide evenly into 60, and so there may be a little bit of distortion because we're, we're changing the frame rate, but there's really no way around that. I am gonna make the raw videos available to you. Look, in, look down in the video description in case you want to look at the raw videos on your desktop and do a more fair comparison even than this. So we're going to start, I'm just going to play you some of these clips because uh, I want you to get the effect of the different frame rates before we start looking at the details of the resolution and seeing which one gives us the highest image quality. We're going to start with the 2.7K 30 clip, which is what you're looking at now. Uh, if you're watching in 2.7K 60 in YouTube or 1080p 60, that's okay. You're still only seeing 30 frames per second because there's only 30 frames per second in the source clip. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to show you 2.7K 48 frames per second. And that's the highest frames per second that the GoPro will do at 2.7K resolution. And then I'm going to show you 1080p 60. When we go to 2.7K 48, which we've just done, one of the things you'll notice is that the field of view is different. The GoPro Session 5 will not shoot Super View at 48 frame per second, 2.7K. So uh, we're only in wide field of view here. There's a little bit less vertical field of view. You may like it better, you may like it worse, but you just don't have any options if you want to shoot 2.7K 48. For me personally, I like Super View. I like the way it looks. I think this looks a little bit cramped and uh, I might give up 48 frames per second if only because it prevents me from shooting Super View, at least on the GoPro Session 5. So here we are at 1080p 60, and for me at least, 60 frames per second looks way better than 30. The difference between 30 and 48 wasn't huge to me, but 60 looks way smoother. And in fact, in just a second, I'm gonna transition this, and I'll do it in Premiere, but I'll change it from 60 to 30 frames per second, the exact same footage, and you can really see the difference. So again, be watching this in YouTube at 60 frames per second, but I'm gonna do the transition in the editor. So here we go, 30 frames per second. 60. I have to acknowledge that what you're seeing here is not a perfect representation of the original clip. And the reason for that is that Premiere, my editing software, is taking the 30, second, 30 frame per second clip and it's doing something to it to make it into a 60 frame per second clip, which I'm outputting here. And the simplest thing it could do is, is just repeat every frame twice and voila. And in, if it were doing that, then what you'd see would basically be a 30 frame per second clip. But it can also do some other fancy stuff. Uh, so if you really want to see the difference between the 30 FPS and the 60 FPS, then I've got links down in the video description uh, to the actual original separate files that I've uploaded to YouTube. And I've got links in the video description to the raw original files as they came out of the GoPro, uh, which you can download from Microsoft OneDrive. So you can you can just dig into it to your heart's content. If you watched those, those settings and you didn't see a massive difference between 30 and 60 frames per second, that's probably because 
Premiere did some wizardry, <laughs> and you really ought to go look at the originals. But frankly, I think many of you already have an opinion on whether you like 60 frame per second footage or not. And there's plenty of examples on YouTube of 30 FPS and 60 FPS content that you can use to, to test the difference if you feel like it. Now let's take a look at individual frames and look at how the overall picture quality compares between these different frame rates. These images are all from 2.7K, 30 frame per second. Uh, I've tried to pick times when the copter was moving about the same speed and about the same altitude. And what I, what I like to do here is look at the foreground low in the frame to look at detail uh, where the, the grass is kind of flying by quickly and see how it's rendered that. As a side note, I think this frame really shows off how wonderful Protune Flat is for capturing this type of scene. Just look at all the lovely shadow details here. It looks great. Now we're looking at 2.7K at 48 frames per second, and the question we're trying to answer is whether the additional frames per second squeezed into the same amount of bits per second is hurting the overall image quality. I do have to acknowledge, though, that this is not a 100% fair comparison because we were forced to wide field of view for 48 frames per second, whereas at 30 frames per second, we were using super view. And if I'd have thought of that, I just didn't think of that. If I'd have thought of that, I would have shot some 2.7K 30 FPS wide but I like super view. So, so basically you're losing the top and bottom of the frame and that's where most of the distortion is going to be when the ground is flying by. So it's a little bit of an unfair comparison, but hey, you get what you get and you can make your own decision as to which of these you think is better with the acknowledgement that a really perfect experiment would also have included 2.7K 30 FPS wide, which I haven't done. And then we've got 1080p 60, which is what you're looking at now. We established in a previous video, to my satisfaction anyway, that 1080p 30 categorically looks worse than 2.7K 30. But how does 1080p 60 compare? Well, you can decide for yourself. There you go. Now you know for yourself which you think is better, 1080p 60 or 2.7K 30 or something in between. I, I am really not actually that decided. I really like the smoother 60 frame per second video. I think it looks better for FPV. But the 2.7K looks so much better, come both in YouTube and coming out of the GoPro, that uh, I think I'm probably going to stick with 2.7K 30 going forward. I just feel like that the codec needs those bits, and it's more important to have those bits making the picture have resolution and not look smeary or bad than it is to have the smoother playback. Uh, but I certainly could see other people making a different decision. And again, as a reminder, these results are only true for the GoPro Session 5, which uses a fixed frame rate for 30 and 60 frame per second content. Again, if you have an action camera that uses more bits per second for higher frame rates, you should do these comparisons for yourself and you can decide whether you can get the higher frame rates without giving up anything in terms of image quality. That's going to close out this playlist. If you missed any of the videos, uh, the other videos in the playlist, again, check the video description down below and check them all out for yourself. Hope it was all educational and as always, happy flying.